So do we need to fill these out? Uh, no, but I will take the test or the quiz, if I give you one, from that. All right? Um, so this is, uh, I'm recording this that I, I did this morning. We're going to review these two poems. Remember that the first act is to Friday. Um, and I think we can go ahead and to do it. Uh, make sure you have it. It's helpful if you have it from the two poems. That's what you should have out. Nothing else. Do away any books. This is not for me. I took it a long time ago, and I don't remember how I did, but I'm sure I didn't do as well as some of you might hopefully do. I'm praying for you, trying to help you. I don't think we did. I appreciate you taking that game, but I don't think we did some of the things that we're trying to do here. Uh, I feel better. I think I could pass it. I think I could pass it without higher grade now if I could take it. You think so, wouldn't you? Um, but I think you're getting what I think you need. All right, so let me let me start with this one. And we're going to take this kind of slow. We're going to try to do it as fully as possible. It helps if it's in front of you. It's going to be up here so you'll be able to see it. But you've got to be able to write things down. So even if you have a blank sheet of paper, write it down. Yes. I might have. I think I have a couple here, and that's it. I don't have enough to. I'm not going to remake any, but I've got three or four sheets. So it really does help if you have a copy. Can I see what it looks like? I don't think it's. I don't think I have. The only one we've done like this where you have them top and bottom like that. So if a lot of you have it, that's it. Alright, so uh, look at this poem, it's called When I Have Fears. Uh, Karen, tell me what it what kind of poem it is. You don't have to even read it, remember? You don't have to read it. I wouldn't be asking you if, if it was, you know, I've never asked you about any other poem except this kind of poem. I mean, that's a good guess, because I've never asked you. We know what odes do. Um, we're going to do some others. Um, but it's, it's useful to know that it's a sonnet. So what, what do we know about a sonnet that can help you analyze the sonnet, even before you read it? Um, Caroline, do you remember what that is? That's right. A problem, a topic, a, 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 any way you want to put it, but there are two parts to it. And the, the solution or the answer or the, the this, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that the answer is in, is in the second half of the poem. They present the, the topic, the response is in, in the second half. So I'm going to read this to, oh, we said that it's a sonnet. There are two kinds of sonnets. Um, this is a good time to review it and have anybody remember. But uh, you, you can tell what a sonnet, what kind it is by the rhyme scheme. So anybody want to do the rhyme scheme to this sonnet for me? Anybody want to do it? Why don't we, uh, Maddie, you want to do it for me? Like indicate the rhyme scheme of the sonnet. Remember how we do that? Yeah. Okay. So goes A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, um, E, F, wait, no. Yeah. E, F, E, F, G. And G, okay. The heroic couplet. Um, so what does that make it? This is where people want, they can figure that out. What is it, Layla? Elizabethan, you call it Shakespeare, and it might be called English. Although there, there are more than one English sonnet, but I've heard it said. So that's what you have here. Um, doesn't make it tremendous, it's just the organization's a little different. Thank you. The organization's a little different. Uh, so how would you literally uh, divide this poem up, knowing that it's a Shakespearean sonnet? How would you, like, if you had to separate into sections, how would you do that? Uh, all right, and you know, I actually do that. I did that when I read your science. First thing I did was look for the rhyme scheme. I counted the number of lines. I looked at the rhyme scheme. And the third thing I did is I drew a line after every four lines. 
that way, now I've already, now visually, I already have made the poem easier to analyze because I gotta analyze four things about it. Um, does anybody at this point, can anybody tell us the problem and the solution? Well, you know where it is. In a Shakespearean sonnet, where would the solution be? The heroic couplet, probably, although it could be the last six, it could be this whole section. So definitely at the end, it could be this whole section, or in this case, I think it's the last two lines. So if somebody want me to tell somebody want to tell me the problem and the solution. It's not really a solution, but we can call it that. The uh, the topic and the response. Maybe we need to come back to that. But anybody at this point want to tell me what it is, Layla? Problem is just talking about the potential getting cut short. About what? By death. Oh yeah. Where does it talk about death? I don't see the word in here. I don't think, but it's definitely the ideas in here. Leo, where is the idea? Where do you first see the idea? Can you imagine writing a poem about death without even using the word death? Right. How about even earlier than that? And that's that's evidence right there. You're correct. Is anything even earlier than that, Maddie? In the first line, it says, "When I have fears, that I to be." All right. So that would be even earlier, but all those other things are helpful. Um, so, what is it about death? He doesn't seem to be afraid of the dying process, but what is he? upset about death. What is it what is it about death that is preventing his causing him problems? There's so much left that he wants to accomplish that he's gonna be able to do. Do you see anything particularly that addresses that that articulates that? In the second quadrant he talks about um, reading the romance. Um, where is it? What about romance? What did you say about romance? Hey. Uh, he's worried that it's not going to Yes. So he's, he's, you said he's talking about romance. All right. Again, what the question is, is what is he worried about death? And it's one of the worries there uh, is that he won't be able to experience. Now, we say romance. What do you mean? Like, do you mean like the literary version of romance that we've talked about? Do you mean the, the love part of romance? I think it's like both. Oh, it is both. Hey, guys, stay with me. If you need a copy of this, I've got one. When I got one right here. You probably have one, but there's one extra. See, when I'm asking Caroline, the poem is divided into four parts. We know the last part's the, the conclusion or the couplet. And so the three parts here deal with the death. What is it about death? And um, let's go back to this first one. What does he say in the first one that he, uh, he's afraid? He's afraid death is going to cut short. Yeah. Uh, it says, like, I'm going to cease to be before my plan is made. My plan is made. Before he's able to write. So what do we call what do we call that? A literary divide. Remember that that's one of the questions. Oh, I notice it says uh, the two poems reflect on similar concerns. Uh, if this is about death, you can bet the next one's probably about death. Read the poems carefully. Write an essay in which you compare and contrast the two poems, analyzing the poetic technique. So you got to do that with with whatever it is. So what do you call that? You see any other of that? Like use the words before and twice. What's a good word for that? Repetition. Um, yes, there's even a better word for that because of its location. Anaphora. And that's only because of its uh, its repetition. I mean, anaphora usually means one word, and it usually means at the beginning. Where else do you see anaphora here? Yeah. There's multiple 
because some of the little lines just begin with T, and then others begin with H, like old and huge, and then there, that, till. All right, so that, that might create at least a sound issue, but going back here, you've got anaphora. That helps you organize it, right? It's, there are three things here, win, 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 and in one case, the two befores, and so what did the two by fours? The first one, uh, what's he afraid is going to happen or not happen? I mean, you may have answered it, but I just want to hear it again. What, how about it, um, Kylie? What's, what's not going to happen if he dies? I mean, in this first stanza. Do what? Right, exactly. Uh, he won't be able to write. So all these ideas in his head are going to still be in his head. They won't be out. Look at the second part here. What's he afraid of there? Um, again, what's death going to bring to a conclusion here? And we said romance. I want to go into that a little bit more. It said, when I behold upon the night starred face, what, if, what do all those things have in common? Huge cloudy symbols of high romance that may never live to trace their shadows in the magic hand of chance. So he told never to love anyone? Um, well, he talks about that clearly here. But what, when he talks about romance here, he says, when he looks upon the night's face, huge cloudy symbols and their shadows with the magic hand of chance. So what is he worried about? What's he focusing now? Here he's thinking about the ideas in his head. What is he talking about here? Oh. About what? About what? What do these words have have kind of have in common? Night, starred face, huge clouds, shadows. It's part of the romantic literature what do they love in romantic literature nature. so it's we, we said this you may disagree we said this first period today inside his head and outside his head uh, the ideas in his head and the things he sees outside with his eyes like the, the night he won't be able to capture all these ideas that they're already in his head but then the things he sees in nature and of course down here um, the love, the other person. So you remember your, you remember your sonnet, and I, some of you really met most of you did actually. A lot of you a little bit not as distinct as I would have liked. But the, remember three things. There are three things. One subject, but three things. Well, here you go. Inside his head, outside his head, and someone else three different things, all about the same subject, about what he's going to miss when he dies. Um, what else do you see in here? Sam, what else? Do you see anything else that is a, is that we talked about anaphora, we've talked about images. That's really what we're talking about here. Um, when he's talking about Samuel, all right. All right, what about it? And so, when he thinks about this, when he thinks about this, when he thinks about this, this is his response. To be alone and do what? Well, what, what, does, what does he say? He says, on, of the wide world, then on the shore of the wide world, I stand alone and do what? So it's not much of a it's, it's not much of a solution, but it, it is a response. When I think of these things, I just gotta ponder. He just stands there and thinks. That that seems to be his response to it, um, because these things are gonna be over, and all he can do. And notice the alone. Go back up here just a minute. What do these words have in common? Again, this is what you could write about in your paper if you were. 
what are those words? Glean, teeming grain, rich garners, full ripened grain. What do those have in common? Uh, yes. Isn't that um, like the vowel sound? Well, yes. The uh, um, um, assonance. But what are the what are the actual images have have in common? I think the problem may be that the words are new to you, except for one. You know what grain is. But what's a garner? What does it mean to grain, to glean? What is what's this something that's teeming? What do they have in common? Um, Will, do you know what they have in common? I think teeming, gleaned, garners. What do they have to do with anything, like together? Maybe the context will help you. We know what grain is. Caroline Knight. Yeah. Um, there's sort of harvest imagery. When you glean something, you harvest it. Garners is, are where you put the grains after you harvest it. Harvest, you know, you, you pick the grain. Isn't that good for what he's talking about? Like, it's like his head is filled with these ideas. He's just got to harvest them. Um, what about the words here? We said they kind of have to do with nature and romantic nature. This is nature, but a particular kind of nature. These are sky, clouds, and night. And, but notice also romance and magic. And then later he talks about the fairy power, wherever it is. So those are romantic. Being alone is romantic. So even the, the imagery, you could speak about the fact that all the imagery is a spe specifically romantic uh, view of nature and the, the, any, any super, the supernatural thing. All right? Well, you really got that pretty well, pretty quickly. Um, the, the, uh, the details is what, you know, I told you, we're going to give you an A or whatever, or a 9 on the paper, an A. How well do you handle the details? All right, I got another one for you. A. See, what kind of poem is it, uh, Jacob? Uh, right. I mean, you could confirm that by counting them, but that's quickly the right answer. Uh, Jonathan, what kind of poem, what kind of sonnet is it? You have to go to the rhymes game. You can tell me the rhymes game. Okay, let me A, B, B, A. Anybody see that? Now that's all you really need to figure out what kind of poem it is. It's not like the one we just did, so it's not an English sonnet. What kind is it? Do you remember the name? Yeah, it is. Uh, or Petrarchan, that's another way to put it. And there are others, believe it or not. Those aren't the only two possibilities, but they're the most common. Um, so that's the kind of sign it is. So um, uh, Noah, knowing that it's a Petrarchan, now knowing it was English, I could divide it into four parts, four, 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 and two. And that helped me, that helped me visually organize it and figure out, okay, what are these three things talking about? How would you organize this? Or how would you divide it? You know, how would you separate? How would, what sections would you, since you know it's Petrarchan? 
The ROM scheme will tell you. Um, can you tell me the rest of the ROM scheme? C, D, C, D, and then what do what you got here? Yeah. Well, look at it again. Past, vast, blast. CD. Yeah, it's C, D, C, D, and C, D. So that tells you how you should organize it. How is it organized? What sections can you divide it into? Yeah, how, how, what do you mean first half? How many lines are we talking about? We'll, uh, it's not there right, so that would be what? Eight. Mm -hmm. Right down to here? All right, so I, I think that would be helpful. I do that. I, every, I told you, every time I read your poem, I would separate, because there were all those kinds, of, all English poets sign it. I would just draw the line, so it would make it easier. Okay, I made something long into now something short three short things as opposed to a longer poem. What do we call this octave? What do we call this? All right. So what's he talking about here? We already said that the poems have something in common. Um, we think it's death, but let me read it and you tell me again, what's the problem? What's the solution? Uh, half of my life is gone and I have let the years slip from me and have not fulfilled the aspiration of my youth to build some tower of song with lofty parapet. Not indolence, nor pleasure, nor the fret of restless passions that would be still, but sorrow and a care that almost killed kept me from what I may accomplish yet. Though, halfway up the hill, I see the pass lying beneath me with its sounds and sights, a city in the vast, dim, vast, I'm sorry, a city in the twilight, dim and vast, with smoking roofs, soft bells, and gleaming lights. And here above me on the autumnal blast, the cataract of death far thundering from the heights. All right, so just like we did before, we know it's a sonnet, so what's the problem and the solution? And, and is it about the same subject? Um, how about it, um, Claire? Um. Like, let's that. prove that. What do you mean? When does he talk about getting older? Um, he says, half my life is gone. All right. You say he was sad. Yeah, he talks about sorrow. Right. And, uh, what else is sad about the poet? Or, or about, not the poet, but about his his the tone is sad what else is he sad about he says like the years have slipped from him correct that's good so what is he sad about he says he's sad but we don't know what he's sad about there actually maybe two things that he's sad about uh, how about it Daniel what are the I think there may be two th things he's sad about what are they? Well, I guess like the first thing could be like how his life has gone by quickly, and then I think the second. Well, let pa pause a minute. Quickly, um, why does he regret that? It sounds like he's having a great time. You know, life things go fast when you're having a good time, right? Well, he hasn't, he hasn't had the time to like fulfill the aspirations. That's right. So. That's right. Where does he say that, by the way? Uh, third line. Yeah. So is, is that similar or different from what Keith said? Yeah, Keats is having, ladies, I want to make sure you get this. That it's similar. They're both, they're both facing death, and they, they're both missing, or feel like they're going to miss something. Yeah, Claire. Who's the bathroom? Yeah. Um, the other Claire. Claire, tell me about um, the other sorrow. Um, it says, like, like here's the other still, kept me from what you may accomplish yet. Say that again. Yeah, he's not specific here, but he has told us that 
he, he's sad because he hasn't yet accomplished what he wants. Uh, but he knows what caused it, but what he didn't tell us. It's some sadness um, that almost killed. He also tells us what didn't cause it. Claire, what didn't cause him not to achieve all he wanted to achieve? So what we know what pleasure and passion might be talking about. What is indolence? You know. Anybody know what that word means? It's laziness. Uh, he said no. Those things didn't cause it. Some sorrow, undefined sorrow, did. Um, all right. So um, Julia, what's the solution? You know, it's probably at the end. We've looked at the first part. What's the end of it? It, what's, you know, I, that's not the best word here. It's like it kind of is, but what is the answer to that? What's the what is response to this sorrow, this failure to achieve? That's true, but what is the solution to that? Is the remember the science have to have some sort of response? If not a solution, just at least, how does he, what's he going to do about it? Remember, what did Keats do about it? He's going to stand here all by myself and think about it. Doesn't sound very exciting to me. Uh, Layla, are you trying to jump in there? Um, and I don't, want to inter I don't want to interrupt you if you had something. Oh, no. All right, Layla. Yeah, just like hope the how do you know that? Where does he say that? What's beneath him? His past? Yeah. Beneath him? That's an odd thing. Wouldn't you say behind him? What does he mean his past is beneath him? It's one of the it's the chief literary device of the poem. What is it, Eloise? Like he uses a a device to establish his ideas. What is the device? He said, beneath me, that's like down there. If I'm looking from my past, I'm thinking behind me, you know I mean? I, in things that happen. Well, um, the cataract of this one. I don't know if it's personification, definitely a metaphor. What? Like when you die and you're buried. Yeah. That would be good, but that's that's not how he uses that here. Uh, Olivia, did we lose Olivia? Uh, What's the question? Sorry. I'm, I'm afraid, I'm almost retired here, and I'm almost afraid that one day, you know, like I've never lost a student. Yeah, that would be terrible. They just, anyway, I'm just glad you, you're still with me. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I, I know you're talking, should... but I do think about that. Is this the one? Is this the time? Is it going to? My question is, what, what's the solution? It's, it's right there. It's right there. It's not hard. It's not really interpretation. It's pretty clear. Oh, how about when? I don't think I've asked you. What's the, what's the metaphor he uses to describe this whole thing of his past and his future? Okay, how about me? You want to try? What's I know the, you just want. What's the, the, the metaphor that the he metaphor, uses to describe this, his, his thinking about his past and his future? It's really right, kind of right in front of you. Not just you, but everybody. Autumn, death, thunder. All those are in there. Sound, light. Keep, keep looking. Anybody want to tell me? Did you get it? Did, did, yes. But what is he comparing the past to? Do you have it? Maybe he's standing on the hill. Yes, yes, right here. He says he's comparing. He's comparing. He's walking up a hill. And he looks down. He looks up. He looks right. There you go. It, that's really simple. Um, he's using a mountain to to describe his life.
So he has, that's a metaphor, right? So um, he's, how far up the hill is he? I don't remember, now we gotta start over. <laughs> Halfway. How old do you think that is? 50. That's a good guess. Most people at, um, the Bible says that it's around 70. So how old would he be? And I wish I could show you the title again. You know the title is called mezzo Yeah. And did you know the word mezzo is a reference? I wrote it down here. It's a reference to the first line in the Divine Comedy. And I, I wrote it down somewhere. I don't, I don't have it by memory. But he says halfway in this life. That's exactly what in Italian mezzo means. And Dante said the same thing. Mezzo Comain. That's the, how it starts. Um, so he's around 35. I think we had, we established that Dante was probably around 35 when he, uh, now he didn't live to 70. I think he died in his 50s. Um, so he's up a hill and he stops and he looks now beneath him and he sees the past. And what does the past look like then? This was kind of interesting. Uh, we'll start all over. How about, how about Maddie? What is he says halfway? I see the past beneath him. What does it look like? Um, it looks like a city that's kind of thin, that's wide. Say that again. A city. A city. Yeah. It's like dim. It's not very bright. Yeah. Why do you think it's not bright? Because night. What? <laughs> oh, I mean night. Um. Well, that, it, yeah, it is twilight. But what do you even think that? Suggest, yeah. It's like full of like pain and struggles. So like, um, yeah, that's why it's like not very bright. Yeah. Okay. What might be another reason, Claire? About you. Well, could it be? Yeah. <laughs> you got anything? Um. <clears throat> yeah. What, why might it be dim and? and hard to see. He's halfway up the hill, but it, it could be, in his mind, a long time ago. You know, like that his, his achievements, um, his past, you know, it just, it stretches so far, it's hard to see those things. Is there any hope here? Like, I've asked you, what is his solution to this? It's got to have some, you know, yeah. Good death. Well, that's the part he's, he's trying to deal with. So how does he deal with death? Is there any hope. That's, that's not so happy to me. Um, I mean, he's a Christian, yeah, but you know, he's a, just a human being. That's not what we... Uh, Jonathan, what do you think? It's like, um, not being able to what he right, but what's the hope there? Is it all sad? I, I see some hope here. He's only halfway out. Yes. That's hopeful. Now, how, how does he know, right? He doesn't know how long he's going to live. Even Dante didn't, he wasn't halfway, he was well over halfway in his life, but that's one. And what does it say right here? Look, he says, kept me from what I may accomplish yet. So that's another hope that suggests that, I, it's, he even thinks, I may still, I may still get it. Um, bad timing, but I can't help but say, you know, close to retirement. Um, so these things matter to me. Um, Brady, Tom Brady, he did retire. That guy is not finished. He's got more to do. I couldn't believe it. I'm not a, I'm not a fan. I'm not a hater. But you know, he was out for one month. He said, "I can't stand it. I got to, I got to get back in it." He's not yet. Finished. Hello, big game today. And for the theme for today's game, as a request from the baseball team, we're gonna do another blackout tonight so come in to school around seven for the baseball game and have fun and let's get a big dub I'm gonna, I think we're all gonna miss that, that, that he's, he, I don't know who's gonna replace him but I don't think I don't know but I, I have enjoyed this uh, last thing we don't have time to finish this but there's no way you could spend that much time, listen, on these poems. You're going to have five minutes 
I mean, look, some of you won't even take that long. Some of you are going to read it and start writing. Bad idea. You, I really suggest, that's why we've been trying, I've been getting you, as you read it, don't, don't take this the wrong way. Don't waste time reading. I don't mean it that way, but don't waste time just reading. You need to make the notes because you're going to forget where that line was if you don't circle it and underline it. That thought. You're going to forget that thought. Can someone finish for us today by telling us how the poems are similar? We've already established about death. Um, but how are they similar or different in the way each poet handles the idea of death? Each one of them the, the, the death thing doesn't scare them. It's the not accomplishing something. That's similar. What do you think? So they both say that like, death is coming soon. They still have a little bit of time. Um, yeah, of course, nobody knows when. What is? What do we see Keats doing in, in his poem? What's he do? Look at it. Yeah. It's not, it's not really doing much. It's just thinking. He's just thinking. He's just pondering. What do we think a Longfellow is going to be doing? Walking, walking, doing, because he's looking up and he's he's he thinks he's halfway through. He's going to make it to the top. So he's going to go after that. That's how they're different. Well, how else are they different? Different, different types of poems. Sonnets are similar, but the type of sonnets not similar. Um, and you know that's why we spend all this time before we go all this time on uh, diction, like the uh, the idea of of uh, 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 Petrarchan versus. Uh, English, the addiction of anaphora, all those things are really key. You're not going to be able to make that that nine or eight unless you draw out all those details and all those uh, devices. So um, we only have 25 minutes tomorrow, but on Thursday, um, Thursday we're probably going to do a, a practice test. I'm going to go ahead and ask you to bring the book with you, the, the text, the workbook. Tomorrow we'll just do something for 25 minutes, and Friday. The, the, the act one is due. Uh, you'll have to answer the questions, but I'm going to ask some of those questions, so I would take a look at it. We'll see you.